If you have watched videos on the ketogenic diet, you may have heard of something called the glucose ketone index. In this video, we are going to explain what that is, where it originated, and what it is used for, and we'll start with what it is. Go ahead, Keith. So what it is, is a simple ratio of glucose to ketones to come up with a single number, and the glucose has to be in millimolars, so um, at least in the United States, most of our meters measure in milligrams per deciliter. So the, the factor to change that is 18.02. So if you have a glucose reading of 90, you have to divide it by 18.02 and you get 4.99. Right. So already we're looking, <laughs> we're seeing that this is a little bit more complicated than just finding out what your ketone reading is and finding out what your glucose reading is. Right. So maybe we should go into what the origin of this was. Um, and this was started by Thomas Seyfried uh, from Boston College. Boston College. And uh, he, he developed this. Actually, this is, I guess, the only the, scholarly paper on it. Yes. Yeah, because it's his, his creation, uh, is what I understand. Here's the patent application. Oh, there you go. Yes. All right. And he's using this as a measure to more accurately predict how well a therapeutic ketogenic diet will work for the treatment specifically of brain tumors. Right. Glioblastoma metaforma. Right. And the, and the reason that it was significant for these types of tumors is because these specific tumors uh, were not good at utilizing ketones for energy. Um, they wanted to use glucose. So his rationale for coming up with the glucose ketone index was that by, by coming up with a single number that describes your ketone to glucose ratio, uh, what you're best doing is getting that person in the, in the level where their body is not producing enough glucose to feed the cancer cells and it is producing enough ketones which those cancer cells cannot run on so the brain cancer cells are basically starved they have no nothing to run on the ketones can be used by the healthy brain cells and this has to do with the warburg effect which is a very sciencey thing but basically in a normal cell glucose comes in and it can do one of two things it can either go through glycolysis which is an anaerobic pathway which goes to its change to pyruvate and then lactate. So when you're at the gym and you're doing those, those hard reps and your muscles start burning and you just finally get to the point where you can't even move your, your arm anymore, that's the pathway that's gone to. It's anaerobic, it's not using oxygen. It's a quick, you know, when you need that quick energy, uh, that, you know, sprinters are very anaerobic. Mm -hmm. They can't sprint that long, you know, that hard for very long. The other pathway goes into the mitochondria where pyruvate goes through the Krebs cycle and is turned into ATP that way. Outside the cell in glycolysis, anaerobic fermentation, it's called fermentation because it makes lactate, that results in only a couple of ATP. Going through the mitochondria, the aerobic respiration produces about 34, 36, some you know, mm -hmm. number. Um, magnitudinally greater than that. So the Warburg effect is what they kind of based their cancer research on. And uh, these glioblastomas, um, very, very aggressive, uh, uniformly um, going to kill you. Mm -hmm. So they found a way to extend these patients' lives kind of accidentally by using the ketogenic diet. Yeah, um, so that was the origin of the glucose ketone index. And the authors talked about the fact that uh, it, it, was, it, it proved to be very correlative that uh, the, a, a glucose ketone index of approaching one was uh, the best place for a person to be therapeutically if they were battling brain cancer. Um, the author also said that they hope to, in the, to look at the use of this glucose ketone index uh, for other conditions, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, epilepsy, different inflammatory disorders. So, um, so that is the trajectory of the glucose ketone index. Now, we've seen though in, in our space where we would consider our space being uh, weight loss for with the ketogenic diet, uh, the adoption of the glucose ketone index. So we wanted to talk about that a little bit. Right. So, and I couldn't find any 
you know, scientific rationale for uh, adopting the glucose ketone uh, index, GKI, um, for just use as far as health or dieting. Um, but you are seeing it more, you know, from people out there. And I don't know, it, it, to me, it, it seems like it's a little bit arbitrary because nobody's really done the science to say that these, you know, that this is accurate. Um, if you want to use it, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but just to go through it a little bit. Uh, so anything above nine means your body is not transitioned into a fat burning state. So if we take some Which is mind, not from Thomas Seyfried. This no, is this, from- is, this is kind of um, just like the generalized GKI in the ketogenic diet blogosphere, space, interweb, whatever you want to call it. So anything above my, nine means your body is not tra- transitioned into a fat burning state. So let's, let's just use some of my numbers. Um, I have a hard time getting my blood sugar below 90 and I have a pretty difficult time getting my ketones above 0.5. I mean, just getting to that point. Mm-hmm. Um, if you followed any of my our videos when we were going through this, kind of difficult for me. Those numbers, um, would equate to 9.98 on the glucose ketone index, which means I was not even close to being in a fat burning state. And yet, um, I was obviously burning fat right. for those for those periods of time. Right. So so the way I did that, 90 milligrams divided by 18.02, which is a factor to convert to millimolars. So 4.99 divided by 0.5 uh, ketones equals 9.98. So It goes down through different levels here. So six to nine demonstrates a low level of ketosis uh, for people who may want to lose weight. Three to six GKI demonstrates moderate levels of ketosis. Uh, It says may be appropriate for addressing many metabolic disease, including insulin resistance, type two diabetes or obesity. So again, let's, let's use my numbers and kind of find out what goes on. So again, Rarely under 90 milligrams per deciliter. So we're going to stick with that Mm 4.99 millimolar. And if I could get my ketones up to one, um, again, hard for me to do, I would be at a 4.99. So that would put me into the moderate level of ketosis. So there's a huge, in just that little bit of change in ketone, ketones, Mm -hmm. you know, measurement, you're you're jumping like through several levels on this GKI. Yeah. Um, Now... Um, since most of you probably watched our fasting videos, uh, on day four of my fasting, uh, my glucose was about 60, and my, which equates to 3.33 millimolar. My ketones were about 3.3. That was a GKI of 1.01. That is that, met, you know, that, that metabolic therapy mm-hmm. level that they want to reach. Right. That's from not eating anything for four days. Right. I mean, that's a hard level to reach, and I and that's then that shouldn't. They never meant that to be used for you know just people who want to lose weight and kind of get a little bit right. more healthy, right? Right. Um, but it's that's pretty a, extreme. That's a good example of how how hard it is to get that GKI down to one. Right. Uh, it took you four days of fasting with right. your with your particular mac, uh, metabolism. And in, in the study, they did talk a lot about a uh, low calorie ketogenic diet. And, and possibly that was related to making sure that the patient was getting their glucose way, way low and getting their ketones way high. Yeah. And I think also that that probably speaks to a little bit of, you know, if you're insulin resistant or not, you if you're if you're pretty insulin sensitive, Lowering some of your calories may get you into ketosis, you know, a, a pretty decent state of ketosis pretty quickly. We've seen that happen with you. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't take you much. Right. Me, it takes, you know, a lot. Right. So here's the takeaway from this. I, I, I don't have any problem using the glucose ketone index. I, I just want you to be aware of kind of its origins. And, you know, in my opinion, it is a little bit arbitrary. And it's also overly complicated, I think. I mean, I don't want to sit down and convert all the conversions and then divide this and find out where I'm going to fall in this chart and be so focused on, you know, that number. In, in my mind, and, and I think what we've kind of come to in all of our, our journey here, you know, if you get your, your glucose, you know, into, you know, 90 or maybe even a little bit below if you can, get your ketones above 0.5, if you can, uh, I mean, but those are the kind of, that's, that's kind mm-hmm. of always your goals, then, then you're doing okay. I don't think you need to get fixated on this, this number. And if you're not, if you're doing a G, GKI and you're not, um, you know, 
at the uh, six to nine range, you know, because these numbers aren't quite jiving. Uh, you shouldn't think that you're not doing the right things, you know, because yep. I think you are. Yep. So yep. that's I kind of that's the good. takeaway. And we just wanted to address it. a lot of you have talked about it in the comments. And um, so hopefully somebody does some research on it someday. You know, yep. maybe it'd be a good thing for Steve Finney and Jeff Foley to do. Um, they seem to like to do those kind of things. <laughs> We're not going to do it. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for watching. And we will see you back here next time.